Welcome to The Solo Grind, where we shine a light on the raw and real journey of being a solo entrepreneur. I am Teresa, your guide on this adventure of going it alone, without a safety net, and without the rule book. The grind is real, my friend, and so are the wins, the freedom, and the joy of building success on your own terms. I'm here to debunk the myths, share some laughs, and share what it takes to thrive as a go-getter, busy, doing-it-all entrepreneur. Hey there, solo entrepreneurs. Welcome to The Solo Grind. Whether this is your first time tuning in or you've been here before, I am so happy to have you with me today. And today, I'm going to shake things up just a little bit. If you've been following along, you might have noticed a small shift in our episode lineup. Our episode with Crystal Nurple, all about the power of pivoting, which was scheduled originally for today, is now going to be airing next week. Trust me, you don't want to miss this amazing conversation, so be sure to come back next week to hear all the wisdom Crystal has to share with us. And I wanted to share that I made this switch simply because it felt right. So today, we're going to talk about something a little bit different and something that I think a lot of us have been facing here recently, and that is this buzzing, overwhelming energy of fear swirling around. I don't think I'm the only one that's feeling this. In fact, I know that I'm not. And sadly, so much of this fear that we are feeling isn't even based on real facts or real data. Instead, it is driven by fear mongering in the media and social media platforms. And It's getting so loud that it's leaving quite a few of us feeling really unsure, anxious, and overwhelmed. So here's something important that I want us all to remember. Fear holds us back, plain and simple. It keeps us procrastinating. It has us second guessing ourselves and it keeps us frozen in place. Even when moving forward is exactly what we need to do. So today I want to encourage you to take control of what you're giving your attention to. Fear, like everything else, has a volume setting and an off switch. We have the power to turn it down and switch it off, especially when it no longer serves us. And just like fear, those sources that are inspiring that fear within us, we have the power to turn them down or shut them off completely. So today, that's what I want to focus on, how we can assess these risks and fears around us and how to dial down the noise of fear and make confident, fact-based decisions for our life and our businesses. Here's another way that fear shows up and holds us back. And it's something that a lot of entrepreneurs deal with, and that is the pursuit of perfection. As we focus our attention on striving for perfection, we can easily find ourselves frozen in indecision, worried about taking the wrong step that is going to lead to failure. But what if the step that you are fearing isn't actually a risk at all? What if it won't have that big of an impact on what you're striving for, or the impact can only be a positive. For me, impact could be, when I think of it only being a positive, it's a matter of I'm gonna learn something or I'm gonna move the needle forward. And both are wins to me and definitely not something to be afraid of. So what if the step that you are fearing right now in life isn't really a risk at all? What if it opens up the opportunity to move forward or learn something really incredibly valuable? So in today's episode, we are going to dive into how to assess what's truly at stake and how to move forward with clarity and courage. Oh, and before we get into it, here's a little bit more about me if you are new here. So I am Teresa Schloop, the founder of Caffeine Creative, where I help confident female-based, service-based entrepreneurs build standout brands through custom branding packages, website design, and relationship-driven digital marketing. Whether you need a full website overhaul or just a little website TLC and tune-up, or you simply want to figure out a positive, powerful way to guide traffic to your website that is your actual dream customers, then 
I am your business bestie. Since 2011, I have been helping entrepreneurs like you create brands that connect, websites that convert, and marketing that truly drives relationships and results. And when I'm not doing those wonderful things, you are probably going to find me jamming out to one of my eclectic music playlists. I listen to everything from Pitbull to Ella Fitzgerald to George Strait, Stevie Nicks, and French Cafe music. You will even find Eminem showing up on my playlist. Just like my approach to life and business, I really like to keep things interesting. So now that you've learned a little bit more about me, let's dive into today's episode. I want to kick off today's episode with a story that might sound a little too familiar. It's the story of Mary, the procrastinating dreamer, and Sally, the entrepreneur. Now, I am going to be honest with you here. I have been both of these women at different points in my journey. And I think you will be able to relate with both of them as well. You see, both Mary and Sally were excited to start their own businesses. They signed up, signed up for training, eager to learn everything that they needed to know. And when they completed their training, Sally wasted no time. She jumped in, taking on small jobs and working with experienced professionals in her field, while then quickly launched her business. Sally wasn't waiting for perfection. She knew she would learn by doing. She took on smaller clients to build confidence and to gather feedback, and each project taught her something new. With every hurdle she faced, she adjusted and refined her business. She realized that growth didn't come from getting everything right the first time. It came from showing up, taking action, and adapting as needed. Mary, on the other hand, wanted to be an expert first. She wasn't ready, so she dove headfirst into more classes, workshops, and seminars. She studied endlessly, always looking for more to learn before she felt ready to begin. All the while, her dreams of launching her business sat on a shelf. While Mary was deep in research, Sally was making connections with her clients and gaining some real world experience. Some of her initial projects didn't go as planned, but instead of seeing them as failures, Sally viewed them as opportunities to improve. She'd tweak her offerings, streamline her processes, and keep moving forward. Each project built her reputation, and word of mouth started bringing in more clients. When Mary finally finished her seemingly endless training, she moved on to finding the perfect business name. Months passed as she agonized over the name, testing ideas, and asking for feedback while tweaking and overthinking every option. And in the back of her mind, there was that lingering question, what will others think? Will they like my business name? Will they even take me seriously? Meanwhile, Sally had rebranded twice since she started. As her niche became clear, she made adjustments to her business name and branding knowing that flexibility was key. Each change was an evolution, and she didn't let fear of what others would think stop her from moving forward. The fear of judgment paralyzed Mary, and as the weeks passed, Sally's business was growing, Sally was learning by doing, refining her business as she went along, and letting go of the idea that everything had to be perfect right out of the gate. She understood that action and momentum were far more important than getting things flawless from the start. Mary, however, continued second-guessing her decisions. When she finally found a business name she loved, she couldn't get the domain she wanted. This setback triggered another round of doubt, and she couldn't help but ask herself, is this a sign that the name wasn't right after all? She went back to the drawing board by multiple domains and delaying her launch once again. By the time Mary figured out her domain name, she faced another hurdle, branding. What color should I pick? What font will represent me? The fear of indecision took over and she spent weeks agonizing over the perfect palette and logo. 
She feared making the wrong choice, unsure if her branding would reflect her true vision or resonate with her audience. Sally, on the other hand, kept refining refining her brand as she gathered feedback from clients. She would test different color schemes, fonts, and layouts, paying attention to what worked and what didn't. If something didn't resonate, she made adjustments, but she didn't let the fear of making a wrong choice stop her from putting her work out there. She knew that she could always pivot if she needed to. When Mary finally settled on her branding, the next challenge appeared, and that is the website. Mary worried, is this the right way to go? Will people like the design? Will it be user-friendly enough? Once again, the fear of indecision left her second guessing every page layout, every feature, and every call to action. In contrast, Sally had launched her website early on, and though it wasn't perfect, it was functional. As she worked with clients, she received valuable insights on how to improve her site and make it more user-friendly. She hired a website designer to help her make updates along the way, but she never let website tweaks hold her back from engaging with her audience and building her business. Once Mary's website was finally up, another hurdle presented itself. What to do about social media? The fear of what will others think crept in once more, making her second guest every post idea, image, and caption. Each step forward felt heavier than the last, and Mary found herself stuck once again. Meanwhile, Sally continued to grow her social media presence by experimenting with different types of content. She wasn't afraid to make mistakes or to put out posts that didn't get much engagement. She knew that staying consistent and showing up for her audience was more important than perfection. Over time, her audience grew, so did her confidence, and so did her business. The key difference, Sally embraced the learning process. She understood that make mistakes were part of the journey, while Mary remained trapped in the fear of getting everything right from the start. So let's be honest now here. Are you a Mary or are you a Sally right now? Are you letting the fear of what others think or the fear of uncertainty keep you from moving forward? We all want to get things right. But here's the truth. The fear of judgment, the worry about what others will think is almost always exaggerated in our minds. Most people are not scrutinizing our every move the way we think they are. In fact, they're probably thinking, wow, look at what she's doing right now. And I'll be honest, if you have somebody who is that in-depth scrutinizing your every move, are they somebody you want in your inner circle? The pursuit of perfection is what keeps us from taking action. We hold back, trying to fine tune everything out of fear of failure or judgment, but that only leads to procrastination. Rather than striving for perfection and pursuing that ultimate goal of being perfect in the eyes of everyone, I suggest that you look at mastery. Mastery is all about learning through doing. Is it about applying what you know, embracing mistakes as part of the process, and improving along the way? This is where, to me, real growth happens and where true confidence is built. Okay, now I want to talk about one of the other most crippling fears that we face as entrepreneurs and just as people in general, and that is the fear of uncertainty. This is the fear that tells us, what if things go wrong? What if I don't know what to do? What if this, whatever this may be, happens? It's that fear of the unknown that keeps us stuck, not because there's any real danger, but because our minds are great at imagining worst case scenarios. Here's the thing to remember. Uncertainty is almost always based on fake fear. It's our brain's way of protecting us from the unknown. But the reality is most of those what ifs never happen. And even if they do, they are often so much smaller than we ever imagined. So how do we handle the fear of uncertainty or this fear of not being perfect? We acknowledge that it exists by choosing not to let fear control us. Remember what I said earlier, 
fear has a volume setting and an off switch. We can turn it down and even switch it off when it's preventing us from taking a step forward. So how do we know if it is fear or actual risk that we are facing? Well, we go on a fact-finding mission within ourselves and assess the risk before us. It's really easy to overestimate the risks involved in taking the next step in our business or in life. When fear gets in our way, we think, what if I fail? What if people don't like it? What if I don't know what I'm doing? More often than not, those fears are based on uncertainty and not facts. Or they're based in what somebody else thinks thinks about you or what we fear they think about us. So how do you know if it's a real risk or just fear holding you back? Let's do a little risk assessment together. Now, the questions that I'm going to ask you, you can certainly grab a journal and do them with me here as you pause the episode. But keep in mind, right now you can just simply listen. I've got them down in the show notes below so that you can take your time as you process through each one of these questions. All right, so when it comes to assessing real risk, question number one, what is the worst that could happen if I take this step? What if you decide, for example, that your branding isn't perfect in six months? Change it. It's not that big of a deal. When I first launched my first web design business way back when, I was actually called Inspirational Web Designs And my colors were a version of pink and purple and green, okay? Beautiful colors, not me. Inspirational web designs, wasn't me. Six months later, I changed the name, I changed the colors, and I was more in alignment with who I am and who I work with. Going along the lines of assessing that, what's the worst that could happen? Um, What if your business name turns out to be confusing? As a life coach, my initial business name was Ayana Wellness. Nobody knew what the heck that was, where the name Ayana came from, or why I was using it. It was confusing. So I changed my business name. What if, uh, again, and with the long, with the worst, what's the worst that could happen? What if your marketing strategy doesn't go as planned? Um, Honestly, a lot of marketing strategies don't go as we envision them. That just happens. You pivot, you try a new strategy and you keep on going. Unless that marketing strategy did something damaging to your reputation, there really isn't anything disastrous about it and it's 100% uh, fixable. Just go in a new direction. Okay, so question number two, we're gonna dive in to is, is the financial cost smart for my business right now? Now here is a big one that is gonna help you determine is this truly a risk or a fear? So first of all, can you afford this step right now? I often will have something that I feel like I have to do, like there's a new software we have to implement or something else, I get caught up in that that aspect of if I wanna move my business forward, I have to do these things. And then I realize it's not affordable in my business right now. It allows me to step back and be like, okay, maybe this isn't as important as I thought it was. I also ask, what is the potential return on investment? If I'm going to be investing a lot of time and money into something, I wanna make sure that I'm getting a lot out of it. A good example is years ago, there was this big push to market your business on Pinterest. And that is a great avenue for a lot of businesses. For a web designer, branding specialist, honestly, it wasn't a great idea for me. I invested a lot of time and a lot of money into creating this whole marketing plan in Pinterest and building up a Pinterest board. And after one year, a lot of work and money, I had two people come to my website from Pinterest, okay? it wasn't a good return on my investment. Now I learned a lot out of that and there was some definite other value in doing it, but you can see what I'm saying is like, was it worth the return on investment? For me, it wasn't. All right, next when it comes to addressing that financial savviness of your decision is, is it going to bring you closer to your goals? My goals was to connect with more people through Pinterest that became actual customers. It didn't work, so I pivoted and I tried a new marketing strategy. All right, question number three. 
Does this decision move me closer to my goals or is it a distraction? Ask yourself, how will this help me achieve my long-term vision? And is it in alignment with my business goals? I have considered adding other services and even temporarily have added other services to my business that weren't in alignment with branding, web design, and relationship-driven digital marketing. They weren't in alignment with my business goals. They weren't in alignment with my long-term goals. So honestly, I scrapped them pretty quick and early on because they weren't going to help me move the needle forward in my business. All right, now question number four, who can I talk to for perspective about this decision? Who on your board of directors is a trusted mentor or advisor that you can talk to about the decision or that risk or that fear that you feel you're facing? Okay, remember, if you tune into last week's episode, we talked about who's on your board of directors. This is a perfect time to put them to work. And again, they don't even have to know they are on your board. All right, so here's something I want you to remember. Most of the risk that we face as entrepreneurs really aren't as big as they seem. The biggest risk is often staying stuck, waiting for the perfect moment to act. Growth, success, and mastery, they come from taking that first step forward, even when it's an imperfect step, and they come from learning as you go. So the next time that you feel fear creeping in, whether it's fear of what others will think or the fear of uncertainty, ask yourself, is this fear based on fact or is it holding me back from an opportunity? All right, so let's go through those questions one last time just so you have them in your mind. Number one, what is the worst thing that could happen if I take this step? Number two, is the financial cost smart for my business. Number three, does this decision move me closer to my goals or is it a distraction? And number four, who can I talk to for perspective on this decision? All right, my friend, thank you so much for joining me for today's episode of The Solo Grind. I really do hope that this has helped you recognize what is fear and what is really risk and help you help you make confident decisions moving forward in whatever it is you are pursuing in your life and business. Be sure to tune in next week when I am going to be joined by my very first guest, a retired professional organizer, former teacher, and aspiring author, plus my very best friend, Crystal Nurpel. We will be talking about the power of pivoting, and I know you are not going to want to miss this episode. Thanks for tuning in to The Solo Grind. I hope this episode brought you some inspiration and encouragement. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, rate, and review the podcast, and feel free to share. For more tips and insights, visit caffeinecreative.io to check out my blog or explore The Creative Vault, my free course library. You can also find me on Facebook and Instagram. I'd love to hear how this episode has helped you.